Hi, my name is Yolani Williams, and I'm a safety tech for the Department of Transportation at Horse Main Elementary, Ward 3. And today we are talking about safety and the concerns of safer roads. A safety technician controls the intersections around school buildings uh, for people who are coming and going um, in the morning and the evening. Uh, so that they have a safe, a safety guard. Uh, and today, the mayor will speak on how we can have safer roads and for people to to, to just um, keep safe. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good morning, everybody, and thank you, Yolani, um, for the work that you do. And I know that work has probably been a little different uh, during this pandemic, but I want to, on behalf of all of us, acknowledge all DC government staff and DDOT staff who have been reporting in person uh, to work throughout the pandemic. So give them a round of applause. I also uh, want to start with another uh, piece of news. Uh, and that is to acknowledge the leadership of uh, Interim Director Everett Lott, uh, who has been serving uh, DDOT for a number of years uh, as, the, as the Associate Director, has been serving as the Interim Director. And now I'm pleased to announce that I will be appointing Everett Lott as the next DDOT Director. So give Everett a big round of applause. He knows well um, that my whole administration uh, has a lot of work ahead of us, uh, and we have a lot of work in the DDOT transportation and infrastructure space as well. Uh, we, of course, have been troubled by the significant increase in the number of fatalities that we have experienced on our roadways uh, in 2021. We do understand uh, that it's part of a national trend uh, and is a, a trend that we intend to reverse in our city and of course support the policies that will reverse it nationwide. We know that too many of our deaths uh, on the roadways are due to reckless speeding through our streets. Uh, last year, you may remember that we lowered the default speed limit in D.C. to 20 miles per hour, and that the reason, uh, and the reason that we did this is because it is clear uh, that a person is much more likely to survive a crash if the vehicles involved are traveling less than 20 miles an hour. But we also need drivers to understand this and drive like they understand this. We've already seen a child killed this year, cyclists killed, and pedestrians killed. And I'm sure that the drivers in those instances never thought that they would be behind a wheel when a person was killed. So today, I'm joined by members of my cabinet to announce immediate investments that we will make to improve safety on our streets. I've asked Director Lott to redirect over $5 million to address some of the most pressing concerns on our streets. One will be the immediate upgrade and, de and immediately deploying devices around the city that let drivers know how fast they're going. And it can't be said enough that vehicles going over 20 miles per hour are more likely to kill a person in a crash. Every mile per hour above that makes your vehicle more deadly. Additionally, this summer, DDOT will leave a targeted effort to improve safety at dozens of intersections across the district. And in my upcoming budget, we will be investing over $5 million to upgrade our automated traffic enforcement cameras. No one likes to get a speeding ticket, but as you've always heard me say, you don't have to get it. But you know, uh, and hopefully you never would, what's worse than getting a speeding ticket is getting hit by a speeding car. What's even better is that 
Uh, we get more people on public transportation uh, and see fewer cars on our roads, which is why, again, uh, in, our, in my upcoming budget, I will advance the proposal that I've done before uh, to make the circulator free. Uh, but most importantly, we want everyone uh, who travels on our railways to know that safety is a collective responsibility. We're going to continue to look at the big picture of how we engineer our roads, make those investments, long-term investments in roadway engineering safety, but we also need to be looking out for one another when we are on the road. Now, I hadn't planned to say this, but it's also an important part of safety and how we get more people on public transportation, uh, and that is to make sure that everybody is getting vaccinated. Uh, we know that more businesses are opening. Uh, we know that more nightlife and entertainment will be opening, and we know that more people are going to be using public transportation. So do your part to protect yourself and your family, but also protect our workers and get our city back to life. So with that, I want to now introduce Director Everett Lott. Thank you, Mayor Bowser, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I am honored to serve in your administration and continue to work with my amazing colleagues at DDOT uh, and every day that makes our streets safer for all who use them. We are committed to making a bold, impactful improvements that will help us get closer to our shared goal of creating safe spaces for residents from zero to 100 on our roadways to get wherever they need to go and however they choose to get there safely. We know that one of the ways that we prevent fatalities and serious injuries on our railways is to engineer streets that make it harder for drivers to speed and create safer spaces for pedestrians and cyclists to travel. Over the coming weeks and over the coming months, you will see us hard at work installing improvements that will help us advance our Vision Zero goals. Like here at 18th Street and M Street Northwest, we're planning a variety of improvements, including a dedicated bike lane, more signage and improvements, pavement markings, among others, and all aimed at making safer streets for pedestrians and for cyclists. This is the kind of work that, thanks to Mayor Bowser's investment, we will do across all eight wards of the district. This investment will also allow us to strengthen the automatic traffic enforcement program, which is one of the tools in our safety toolbox that is most likely to encourage drivers to slow down. As the city and as the region begins to reopen, and we will begin to move around our streets this summer, there's one thing we want everyone to remember. Safety is everyone's responsibility. Please look out for each other, obey speed li the posted speed limits, and always follow the rules of the road. Again, I want to thank you, Mayor Bowser. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let me uh, also acknowledge that we've been joined by a number of um, the partners to DDOT uh, in this safe streets work, uh, including uh, the Metropolitan Police Department, uh, the Department of Public Works, the Department of Four Hour Vehicles, uh, all a part of our uh, operations and infrastructure cluster led by Deputy Mayor Lucinda Babers. So with that, yeah, you can, you can clap for Demois. That's fine. I think that's all our speakers. Uh, and I'm happy to answer a few questions. Yes, sir. We've been hearing a lot, and I noticed you had a couple of police uh, officials behind you, but we've been hearing a lot about this hack thing going on, you know, with the D.C. Police Department. Is there anything you can tell us about that? how it's going? Has the city actually paid any of this stuff? Um, but I, I, we've said and we released a statement yesterday, Sam, um, that we're engaging our processes that we plan in the event that we've dealt with something like this. And that's all I have to say. Hey, yeah. Can you comment, staying with that, with Sam's question on the, on the hack, can you tell us anything about the, the most recent posting one of DC offering $100,000, them wanting $4 million, and then 
your concern about what, you know, they've already released more information about police officers. What is your concern about possibly more information being released? As I said, we've made a statement, Mark, and I really can't say more than that. And then could I ask on a second topic? Sure. On, on the, uh, the search for the missing two-month-old, is there any update on that? And, and have you seen the video of the mother saying that she put the child in the trash and is the police I know behind you I don't know if they're prepared to talk about it um, I don't um, sadly you're you're referring to a, a child um, uh, that MPD uh, continues to investigate uh, his whereabouts and what happened to him uh, I haven't seen a, a video um, but as I mentioned uh, the M uh, MPD is questioning uh, his mother and then I have one other off-topic yep. question about uh, D.C. jail. Uh, the ACLU has filed suit on behalf of an inmate, uh, a transgender woman who's being held in the male detention unit. Uh, can you comment on what the policy is and why the commission that would be enabled to move her at her request to the, to the women's unit, which DOC says she can avail herself of, that, that committee has not met in more than a year. I mean, can you provide any details on what's going on there and, and if, if you think this policy is acceptable at the jail. What, the quarantine policy? No, no, no. Keeping a housing inmates based on their anatomy rather than their gender identity. Uh, I would, can I have the DOC director talk to you um, directly about that? Uh, I understand that uh, an inmate is being held in quarantine, but I don't think that the policies that you refer to are at play. Well, she's being held in quarantine, and her quarantine ended two days ago. Okay. And she's in the male detention unit. Well, That's let me let me get the details about that, Mark. Thank you. Let me get the details. Anything else? Yes. Couple couple Vision Zero ATE questions. Can you detail a little bit more about what the automated traffic enforcement, uh, what the five million gets us? Is it? certain numbers, where they go, that sort of thing? I can't tell you um, where they're gonna go. Um, I can tell you we will continue uh, to propose to the council uh, that DDOT become the custodian of that program uh, as we've done a couple of times. Uh, I feel like there's more energy for it now uh, at the council. Uh, we know that we have uh, to look at our equipment on the existing ATEs uh, and add additional ATEs. Uh, and we will focus on safety. I don't know if Director Lott or Assistant Chief, if you wanna, if you wanna add anything to that. And, uh, no, oh, sorry. Uh, um, with the Vision Zero bill that was passed by council, do you plan on funding that in your budget? What, which part? All of it. Because I can't it's, remember a, exactly. it's a big it's, 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 it's a, a big, it's one. A big bill, yeah. Um, I can't remember. And so we will identify um, all of the immediate things that we can do. And what I'm talking about now are investments in now. Uh, in this fiscal year, uh, in the summer of safety programs that DDOT will be focused on, uh, where they're moving $5 million, they're focusing on uh, intersections that have been flagged for any number of reasons uh, for pedestrian safety improvements. And we will continue uh, to look at the, the bill and make those improvements or investments that will have immediate and long-term impacts. And then lastly, um, with 2015, you made the, the Vision Zero goal to be, you know, zero fatalities, zero major injuries by 2024. We're very close to that year. Do you still believe in, in that goal, that you can get to that goal by, by 2024? Uh, I, I believe with all of us working together, we can make our streets safer. Um, will we, will we? Okay, now I'm being interrupted. So I can't answer your question. Anything else? Yes, Sam. As you look around the city, you see a lot of these white poles that are that are up. You know, uh, I know in my neighborhood, it, streets have stuff on them. Used to be West Virginia Avenue, you could kind of go. White poles? Yeah, these plastic poles are okay. all over the place. I, I was just curious about uh, about them. And, and for example, there used to be cross streets. Now they've been bricked in. If you go like the intersection of 8th and Pennsylvania Avenue Southeast, those areas, is that all part of this or it, it, there's such Do you know the changes? intersection he's talking about? Ca uh, 
Street and 8th, Pennsylvania and 8th. Are you talking about um, the, the bump outs to make the intersections more uh, 90 degrees? Perhaps. I mean, it's just. They're, they're, <laughs> well, it's hard for me to answer your well, question. Well, Mayor, there are all these changes going on. And yes, I'm, I'm, get I'm, used to it. There are changes going on. And here's why. Uh, this city was set up for people to drive through it. Um, usually for people to drive from Maryland or Virginia through it very quickly. Uh, and what we are, what we're talking about is how we can use uh, engineering changes. Now you're talking about some that I would, I would call soft engineering changes that doesn't involve digging up the road um, or, but it could mean changing how fast people can go around a corner or blind spots on entering an intersection and not knowing specifically what you're talking about. I'm guessing it's some of these. Uh, improving the, the visibility, slowing down traffic, uh, making buffers for pedestrians and bicycles or making lanes exclusively for buses. Those are all of the things that are not only going to help us reduce uh, traffic fatalities, they're going to improve the quality of life in our neighborhoods. Now, let me tell you about another change. What we've learned uh, in this last year, uh, where we've had, you know, fewer cars on, on the road, uh, unfortunately they're going very fast, uh, is that we can do uh, many other things with our, our public space, our businesses, our commuters, our drivers are adopting those, those things as well, like going to streeteries or having more space to walk down the street. So those are some of the changes when you hear DDOT talking about how to make streets safer, they're all on the table. Okay, thank you everybody.